Nicole Jones as the chair, vice chair, Chris Clemmer, secretary Clemmer, attendees, Helen Sanders, Amy Jugande, Michael Provo, and we're still waiting for Deborah. Um, so I call this meeting to order. Um, do we have any new member interest, Helen? Not that I've heard of. Not that you've heard of. I've seen some enthusiasm on Facebook, but no one's actually applied for the positions. Michael has turned up. I spoke with Judy Ryan. Uh, she's a longtime town resident. She's been on the budget committee. Um, she was really excited about the fact that it was existing and suggested that she might want to uh, put an application in. She started the Main Street program in Newmarket and was instrumental in helping to get the, the first Heritage Festival up and running and things like that, so. What's her last name, Mike? Ryan. Ryan, uh, Judy Ryan. Um, yeah, okay. she also was involved with the Mill Space Initiative and developing LACA, which was the Lamprey Arts and Culture Alliance. Okay, thank you. Uh, I did make mention to the New Market Business Association that, so they did put out a social media message that we're still looking for members. I did reply to the Facebook post and the what the hell is going on in New Market, um, saying, yes, we are looking for new members, where you can find the application and who to send it to for processing. So, We'll see what happens, I guess. Um, did everyone have a chance to review the meeting minutes from last meeting of July 21st, 2020? Yeah, okay. Do we need to discuss those this time around? I just thought that I was the one who was supposed to be contacting um, Leanne and it listed it as you were the one that was supposed to be contacting. I did, I did make contact with her. Okay, so then I will not continue the efforts that I made, so. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I did reach out to her and I forwarded the email to everyone on the committee. Um, she's in Africa and she will be back uh, but not long enough to complete some type of project. So she gave her blessing to okay. do what we need to do to- yeah, we didn't get any email, so I didn't know. Yeah. So- So, um, so Nicole? Yeah? You would entertain a motion to accept the minutes. Someone would second the motion and then- yeah. if had any corrections or additions we would do those and then vote who accept the minutes all right so i move to accept the meeting minutes from july 21st so so say, everyone all right Hi. Hi. <laughs> moving on <laughs> um so we talked about leanne wiley uh i did reach out to alan mitchell because uh, someone had mentioned that maybe he would be interested in our um, storefront project. Uh, he's going to think about it and get back to us. And we were reaching out to different landlords, contacting them to review uh, our up gallery idea. So, Helen? I've tried to reach new to you. I've left phone messages. It's an answering machine at the number that's on the on the window. Um, From Patty, yeah. Other infer any other way to contact that particular person? Uh, I may have a way to reach out to her okay. personally. So she, I can, I can tackle that. involved in, um... Uh, yeah, the uh, Seacoast uh, retired score. Score? Yeah. 
before. Yeah. Okay. I did reach out to Caitlin at Tipsy Tabby. She is not going to be up and running for another couple of months. So she's definitely interested in some type of storefront pop-up gallery. Um, if we could steer it towards cats, she'd really be happy with that idea um, as that's her genre. Uh, Helen? I did talk to Lisa Kessler about this the other day, and she said that she would be interested in having some in her window, even though she's not an empty storefront. Perfect. So um, I, I'm actually the town council liaison to the business association. So mm -hmm. um, we're going we're gonna to see what kind of interest there is in existing stores um, who may have some window space. Perfect. How... Uh... We, the other storefronts were the tail waggers. I have reached out to them, but have not heard back. Left a message with detailed information and was hoping to hear back, but no return interest. How about the tattoo parlor? Was anybody, anybody able to reach out to them? No? You mean the beehive? Or the old, the five monkeys tattoo or the beehive? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I have the beehive. I spoke to uh, the landlord and he said it's, it's, it's now rented. And it's oh. going to be a da, 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 general juice bar. Juicery. Yeah. Cool. I heard that. Okay. Is it, is it part of the juicery or is it a separate standalone? He called it a juice bar. A juice bar. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the same a, owner as yeah, the convenience it, store down the road. Um, he did a suggestion, which I can discuss after we go through this list. Sure. Uh, so what other storefronts do we have? What are we missing? Empty storefronts. Was that everything? I can take a walk between now and our next meeting with my dog and we can kind of just go through and see if there's any we missed. You know what I mean? Like I'll take an itinerary of the empty storefronts. Um, sure, I might also take, maybe I take some pictures too so we kind of get a better idea of what we're working with so we have something to give artists. Um, That's a great idea. Great idea. Uh, So we have a couple window spaces that we can work with. Do we have a deadline? I mean, winter's coming <laughs> already. I hate to say it, but winter is coming. Do are we doing a Halloween haunt this year, Amy? Um, as far as that goes, I'm on another community collaboration um, talking about events. I am still trying to figure out the the best way because that a thousand people generally show up to that, right? Um, and the parade, they're all over the street. So I'm in storming uh, mode on different ideas that might not create a gathering. Um, we did a drive-through Easter egg hunt. I don't know. Um, I'm still I'm still kind of in the middle of thinking that through. And it, it really depends on where we are in the state at that point, because it would be held on October 24th. Yeah. And it's too soon to make a decision yet. Right. It's reasonable. Okay. Um, do we want to set a deadline for these types of projects? I mean, I guess one thing Helen. How many stores, how many storefronts would we need to actually get it started? I don't think we need to have all the empty storefronts. Right. How many would we think would be a reasonable number to say, okay, we've got three, we've got four, and then maybe build from there when other people think, you know, other people see it and go, wow, I'd like to have that as part of what I have in my windows. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we I want to, you know, try to, try to identify three that we could start with. 
but then we also need to decide how are we going to get the artists and how are we going to judge who gets to be in what storefront? We haven't really decided on that. Right. I just feel like we're running out of time already for this type time of year mm -hmm. and that it may be a spring project as opposed to a fall project. What do you think? I I know when we do the Halloween haunt, we literally have a storefront Halloween um, themed storefront window and a con contest on who mm -hmm. has the best front. Uh, there are definitely businesses who are involved. And at the one point, um, with some businesses, they just didn't have the time. So they filled out a form that we would send out to all the businesses on Main Street. And they'd say, we're going to decorate our own our own." Um, storefront, or they check a box and say, please come decorate it for us. So, you know, maybe we sent out some sort of a, a notice that this is happening and you might get some response one way or another. Is that something we want to do is send out a letter or do we want to just do phone calls for the storefront pop-up gallery? I mean, a letter always, it's always good to have a paper trail. Um, I don't know, but I mean, you know, you letter, email or some sort of thing that people can actually, I guess, actually have. I mean, yeah. A phone call might not hurt either as well. I don't know. Maybe a letter with a follow up call. It seems to cover both bases. Yeah, I used a letter to them, explained it, and then followed up with it, then emailed. <laughs> it was a three step. Hey. Right. <laughs> are, are you trick or treating? Do you want your storefront up, um, decorated for you? Are you going to decorate your own storefront? It was like these options, choices, and so forth. So I think that, and you could even say, you know, if you think that it's too um, late in the season to try this, you could say spring or or for the year. You know. I mean, I'd hate to see the storefronts empty for so many months, but. It does seem like to get, gather artists and to get this really in motion that it's going to take a little bit more time. Michael, did you have something you wanted to? Yeah, um, having done this many times in Rochester and Jaffrey and also in Dover, um, it, it takes a personal ask. And basically, you just ask an artist and you throw them in a store. It, it's not rocket science. Um, it doesn't take a lot. Going back to what Amy was saying, working with businesses is really tough because they're usually all mom and pops. They're very busy. And having experience of over 25 years of doing it, I would say a lot of times with some businesses, it takes six to seven hits to their business to get them to actually look at the information and respond. Um, you know, even things like free comic book day in Rochester, which happen every year, um, two months of emails and letters going out and dropping them off at the business. And we were still running around the week before I'd be at the national main street conference and they're calling me saying, is it too late to sign up? And it's like, well, you've had three months, but yeah. So well, it's really difficult working with businesses. So. Seeing that we have the interest from the Cat Cafe already, would it make sense? That's a pretty, um, a, one of the larger spaces, if I recall correctly, and it's right downtown. Would it make sense to try to find the artist for that one and then use that as just, like a jumping off point to find other artists and locations that would be interested. Yeah, and I think it's difficult to be promising a landlord that you're going to try to do one artist because then you're trying to control the artist and the creative process. Yeah, so maybe it would make sense. To say, yeah, we'd love to do it, but we can't guarantee it's going to be art that has to do with cats. Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, the only other thing to do would be to see whether or not there's an artist in the area that specializes in cat-type 
pitchers that would be interested. But like you said, you wouldn't want to stifle their creativity in any way. But looking for an artist that already has that interest might make sense. Hmm. So we talked about contacting the mill space for a list of artists. Was any of you Anybody able to make contact with them? I'll no. contact them and see what they say, but they do the the left side of the brain thing every year, you know, the big show and stuff. So there's always, you know, and there's people that I know off the top of my head in town that work artistically too. Uh, Rose Halloran on Lang's Lang does stained glass work. We've got a blacksmith with Russell Pope. You've got Cynthia next door to Russell on North Main Street that does, uh, she does her own clothing line and designs clothing and stuff like that. And, you know, people like this can jump at an opportunity just to get their work displayed and their name out there. We could possibly just, I know the NBA just did the t-shirt contest type thing. It definitely could be some sort of social media post looking for artists um, you know, coming from the, the Arts and Tourism Council for a project in downtown. And I'm sure, you know, you would, you would start hearing from people if there was like an email contact type thing. People love to have their artwork displayed. Helen, were we able to find out if we could have our own page through the town? I'm sorry. Um, I no, I did not do that yet. I apologize. I will. Um, I will. I will get that done. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> I'll make sure I take a picture of. I'll do all the storefronts, but I'll make sure I especially get the cat one, and I'll have that by the end of the week. I'll email it to everybody. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. And I'll contact Mill Space and see if they have any list of art contact. Okay, great, Mike. And I don't know if Raka is still active or not. Do you know, Amy? Um, I know that Anna Viciana, who was originally on this board, I'm not sure she is back. She was uh, running a camp up in Maine. I'm not sure she's back, but I believe she is the, the board uh, chair now. But I can certainly reach out to her. Okay. Is that for Raka or for the mill space? Laka is the friends account of the mill space, my understanding how it runs now. They kept the Laka name, yeah. but it's now the mill space and the finance where the, the where where the revenue. But I could be I could be wrong, so I can check. Yeah, because I'm on NCDC and we're the ones that own the mill space anyway, so we lease it to them. So we usually get an answer pretty quick. Like correspondence could be LACA is what I'm saying. I, I just don't know. Uh, I think it's an internal way there because I was sending information to both LACA and mill space and someone once told me it's one and the same. It's just the LACA is what they, what they use for financial purposes. Um, oh, go ahead, Amy. Well, when the one thing that I wanted to mention, um, I know we're kind of focused on this project, but when I did reach out to the land for uh, where the beehive was, he that he had an artist who has um, asked about painting a mural in Pocket Park. Mural in Pocket Park. And I know that this has been um, a discussion on Facebook. I've, I've seen that the chats go through and someone then I, you might've seen this, Nicole, someone might've said, um, join the arts and tourism council um, because they were, there was a push somewhere about um, honoring uh, uh, Cheswell. And then mm -hmm. the, um, um, uh, the landlord mentioned that there's somebody who's interested, who's a painter who had inquired about painting a mural in pocket park, what it is. I'm not sure if it was Jezebel or just a new mural. 
Um, but it definitely is a thought if we can't get this other thing up, you know. Yeah. The big thing is to make sure that they're not trying to do a representation of Wentworth because there's no known likeness of him. So anything they do needs to focus on his and his yes. achievements. Yes, I think that was the history best. wise, you can't put a likeness of Wentworth Cheswell there because the next thing you know, it's going to be all over the place. This is Wentworth Cheswell, and there's no known likeness of him. Yeah, I think that they they mentioned that. But yeah, I'm part of that we, for a shame. Uh, <laughs> and John Herman's doing a huge, the, uh, the mural. huge um, effort right now because next year is the 275th anniversary of his birthday. Mm -hmm. So he's got a whole educational piece that he's developed, and you know, he's doing the same. He's dealing with the same thing because you can't put a likeness of Wentworth there. I mean, I don't know what the mural with the woman who inquired about painting, and I just know that she was an artist that inquired to somebody about painting the uh, a mural. So just having somebody who's already interested in painting something, which I just was thought, well, if it's not on Elm Street, maybe, you know, I do I do not know the condition of Pocket Park. I at this point I can't remember if that needs a new mural or if there's a place for it. Um, but that, it was, that was done by the uh, after school group. Yeah, that's right. right. It is, but I, yeah. I don't know who actually yeah, I don't the know. Process, I just know I know I saw the discussion. Yeah. Well, it's town owned. Yeah, it is. Okay. And um Having been involved with the mural that is there, it was the students, and they decided to connection with the mills and the covered bridge. Okay. Because that's the covered bridge that's there that went out with the floods and everything. Okay. I, I just haven't seen it in a while, so I wasn't sure why he inquired about. So. Ellen, I would think what we'd need to do is maybe have her submit an idea, a, a, you know, a sketch of something that that what she what is she thinking of doing with Pocket Park? Uh, because I'd, I'd like to have this committee have some say over what happens there. Um, I really don't want to say, sure, go ahead and paint a mural. And then what goes up there? And we're like, mm, yeah, no, that wasn't quite what we were looking for or had in mind. Um, yes, I, I believe all artists should have the right to you know, express themselves. But just like the mural over by the library, I would want this committee to have some control over what actually happens on that space mm -hmm. and not just give it to somebody and say, yeah, okay, you're going to do the mural for us. Um, I, think I was you know that going in storefronts. We'd like to know design. What are you going to be putting up? Um, and do you think that's too much control or not enough or what's the committee's feeling? I think every artist should, you know, understands it has to be some sort of approval process when it comes to anything for a town or a city municipality. I mean, I think that's pretty common stuff. I think asking for a draft or a sketch, um, basic understanding is, I, I would imagine, is pretty common. Okay. And I think the important thing is not to become the uh, creative police for the town of Newmarket. Right. But we don't want to be seen as that at all. So. No, I... I only mentioned it because that there was conversation about it, and I just, if something's going to happen there, I would want to know that the Arts and Tourism um, Committee had some sort of heart in that, especially since that's what we're trying to do right now, whether we go to the storefronts or we, and I know we talked about murals, I just wanted to make sure you were aware that there is a discussion about this and that maybe somebody should research you know, whether somebody has the right to just go paint that without discussing it with the Arts and Tourism Council. Well, I, I know the town council, there were a couple, at least one town councilor had chimed into that thread. Mm -hmm. And John Herman was on it, who's doing all the work. And, and uh, that the suggestion was that it be brought to the town council and that possibly this would be something for this committee to work with. Exactly. So, you know, as far as honoring the Wentworth Cheswell, which was one of our projects and ideas anyway, yeah. you know, and I suggested maybe something like a bas relief, which is 
sort of like the, the carved monument things that they put on walls. Um, you know, there's many, op many different opportunities to do something. Helen, is there town funding for any of these kind of projects? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, no, I thought I'd ask. Not really, um, especially <laughs> with the whole COVID thing and people mm -hmm. still, I mean, we still have how many millions of people out of work right now and how many people losing their homes. And yeah, so I think this would be low priority on the list. Um, I think okay. we would be able maybe to do some fundraising, um, okay. something like this. Um, I, I can, I would, if we do have any money at all, it would be probably enough for a couple gallons of paint, but I'm not sure it would be. I know um, John Kuiper had mentioned wanting to have a, some sort of statuary for um, Cheswell. And to nobody knows what he looks like. Um, and he had mentioned that he would, that would be something for like a separate fundraiser, maybe in conjunction with historical society. Um, so the short answer is no. All right. Yeah. Good to know. Good to know. Just curious. Yeah. So if somebody does want to paint the mural in Pocket Park and is looking for us to provide, you know, three hundred dollars worth of supplies, um, I'm not sure exactly how the money for that would work. But that is another question I can bring up with Steve. Okay. Thank you. But I, I would say for now, safely assume no. 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 That's a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> So going forward, what do we want to work on for before our next meeting? Okay, I think possibly what we might want to do is the suggestion that we start with tipsy tipsy tabby that yep, Caitlin. Yeah. Right. Has expressed an interest. And then possibly put something out on social media saying we're looking for artists um, who might be interested. We're, we're working on a project in town. Um, I think for the bulk of it, knowing that Halloween's coming and then right after that are open are going to be decorating for Christmas. Um, and that we still don't have artists. We still haven't reached out. And we're only meeting once a month at this point. I'm not sure it's going to get done before Christmas. Other right. Tipsy Tabby, and maybe something with Lisa Kessler at the um, Kessler Agency. Right. Um, but I, I think other than those two, I'm not sure much else is going to get off the ground between now and Christmas, unfortunately. Okay. What's everybody's, you know, kind of time frame? That's probably realistic. Um, I, I think, you know, even if the benefit of if we can do something at a couple storefronts, then we can use that as leverage and examples for the spring. Uh, if business owners especially have seen that it's, it's worked in the past and it wasn't too clunky or odd or goofy looking, then they probably be more likely to sign in. So I think we could use those two as great examples. Sounds good. Okay, so how do we get started on that? Who's, what's the next step? Uh, I'm going to make sure I get a picture of, of so I'm going to take a picture of all the empty storefronts in town, but I'll make sure I ID, you know, it sounds like the Kessler one and the Tipsy Tabby are our best bets. I'll make sure I get both of those um, and I'll email the group, I said by Friday with those. Um, I need to have an idea what they're working with that night. And I'll be contacting LACA or No Space for seeing if we can get some help from them for identifying some of the artists in the area. And as soon as I get anything, I'll respond to the committee. Okay. And I can reach out to the artist just to find out what the inquiry was regarding Pocket Park. And what about social media for artists? Well, even if we don't have our own Facebook page, we could always post something on Newmarket Community Chat or what the hell's going on in Newmarket. I can put something together and then share it. Helen, <coughs> 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 you talked about doing a bulletin. I'm sorry? 
Oh, you, you talked about doing a bullet, uh, newsletter bulletin, uh, putting something together for that. Is that shareable? I'm sorry. Putting together a newsletter for a town newsletter comment on what we're looking for. Um, to go out in the town newsletter. Okay. And then if you just write it up and get it to Steve, he'll. Right. Yeah. And then if we can share Thursday. that, share that uh, on social media to the different groups so that it's more of an official. So it would be announcement. highlighting what we want to be doing and the fact we're looking for local artists and we're looking for storefronts, either empty or current. Right that would want yeah i'll i'll write something up and then share it with the group and people can comment and then i'll take it to steve right i think that's a great idea i do believe i'm not sure um but maybe helen i think the newsletter is now being produced by tim okay um i don't know if it's steve's anymore that he's been doing so that you can ask Steve. Maybe it needs to go through Steve's approval before Tim does well, it. I, but um, what I might do is send that, it. That to, was just something I heard the other day. Yeah, what I can do is send it to both of them and say, "Here's what we'd like to have in the newsletter," and that way they, you know, whichever one of them is going to do it. That way, Steve's aware of what we're doing, and if it's Tim that puts it in there, then Tim has the copy. And the recreation department, we can put it on our Facebook page, and then I can share it. Um, in the different locations so it's still coming from the town as well right. okay right makes sense okay okay so we have a little bit of homework um uh, next meeting are we thinking september 15th that's uh, about Three, four weeks from now. And that's the third Tuesday. Third Tuesday. Sounds good. All right. We'll try. Awesome. I'll know by then about the Halloween haunt too. Okay. Great, Amy. What's going on there? Yep. All right. I have a couple updates. Um, the Stone School Museum will not be open this year for the rest of the year. We will not be doing our holiday open house at the museum. There's just no way for us to practice social distancing in there or control it. And there's just too much stuff to try to clean. And our members are all pretty much of the age that we shouldn't be around a lot of people anyway. Um, and that being said, there will be no murder, murder tours this year because social distancing, wearing a mask, trying to speak, even if I limit it to 10 people, that's like 60 feet across trying to speak through. It just doesn't work. So what about the Santa pub crawl? Santa pub crawl is the same thing. You know, you're, you're talking 200 people in a room, mm -hmm. you know, and as far as us putting it together, we'd have to have a lot of masked Santas. You know, and it's also up to the different restaurants and stuff because they have to be able to yeah. control it inside and things like that. And, mm -hmm. and uh, usually for them, it's an extremely crowded night and it would definitely put them over. I think last year it was over 200 and some odd. So it definitely would put most of your restaurant lounges over capacity for the night. So uh, the the it's still out the final decision um but the board's inclination right now with the museum is to not do it this year until uh things straighten up a little bit so mm -hmm. and, and that's a lot of um community rec departments they we're all kind of looking to whether or not it's the right thing to do. You no, know, can we do it? I mean, I ran a summer camp program, but I had a lot of space and I was able to spread kids out and social distance, but attracts people. It's a, it's a different, it's a different mm -hmm. thing altogether. So we, again, just trying to come up with a creative idea on how to, how to run events without um, compromising social distance. 
Well, I know at the museum, we always run the third grades through when they study local history in the fall. And at this point in time, we're actually writing a script and we're working with our high school interns to actually host a video where they will go through the museum and talk about the things that Chris and I normally talk to when we bring the students through and have it videotaped so it's available for the teachers so the kids don't look out, lose out on their local history education this year because it's something the third graders all look forward to. So Tim, you're probably going to get a call. <laughs> We seem to have lost somebody. Nicole got dropped. Yeah, it looks like it. For a minute or so to see if yeah. again. She just whoop. Yeah, I think at this point any long term planning is just that planning. Not knowing where this is going to go in the fall. Um, I know the school system is going to be going to all um, at home distance learning in November for yeah. the rest of the winter because um, this will back right into flu and cold season. It'll be hard to tell which kids have COVID and which kids have a cold. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it's just going to be a very odd winter. I heard that that was the, a possibility. I don't know if it's it's an absolute that they, they would consider that in November. I don't know if it's an absolute yet, um, listening to the last school board meeting. So unless they change it from the last school board meeting, they wanted to make sure that people understood that it's, that is a possibility. Okay. It does sound like many towns are considering exactly that. I think it's a pretty realistic possibility. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same with this historical society. We've got this, New Market 300 and USA 250 are all on hold and stuff. So, if Nicole doesn't come back soon, should we maybe think about tabling this meeting? I think we had pretty much wrapped everything up. Um, does everybody else feel similarly that we're at the end of what we were doing? Yeah. I think we all kind of have our assignments. And... Okay. Then I guess um, the the co the um, vice chair can call the rest of the meeting. Uh, do I put it to a vote? You you can. You, oh, I guess should we should we end the meeting? I'll say aye. 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 The, the ayes have it. Um, okay, since the advance meeting will be September fifteenth at seven p.m. I'll see you folks. Then. Yes. And meanwhile, we'll yeah, all be right. stuff back and forth by email. All right, yep. perfect. perfect. Have a great week. Have a great week. Bye bye.